Hi. Well, here we are in social isolation sewing classes. Um, before I start, I should just tell you a bit about my sewing. So I've been sewing since I was about six or so when I first kind of started sewing with hand sewing with needle and thread. And I was probably about seven or eight when my mum taught me how to use her sewing machine. So um, age is not necessarily a barrier to using a sewing machine. You know your kids best and know whether they'll be able to handle a machine moving at quite speed with a very pointy thing going up and down that can cause injury. I don't want to scare you about sewing machines, but um, when you're taught to use them and, and use them properly, they're fine, they're great. As long as you, you uh, do what you're supposed to, you'll be absolutely fine with a sewing machine. All the projects that I've uh, devised, you can do either by hand or on a sewing machine. Bear in mind, if you do it by hand, they're gonna take a lot longer because sewing a line of stitches neatly is a lot more labor intensive than whizzing it through the sewing machine. Probably as I go through these makes, I will be doing them on my sewing machine, but you can do it by hand, absolutely fine. Also, I am in no way a professional sewer. Like, I just enjoy doing it. I learned to do it as a kid. I've sewn so much in my life. For me, one of the staple things I have to have is a sewing machine. When I moved to the USA back in the year 2000, which seems like a million years ago, um, one of the first things I bought myself was a sewing machine because I knew I would need it. I knew I would use it. So I can't recommend having a sewing machine in the house. <laughs> it's highly enough. It's just an absolute like life essential as far as I'm concerned. I'm guessing that some of you will have a sewing machine at home, one that either you've bought or inherited somewhere along the line, and either you've forgotten how to use it, you don't use it very often, you don't know how to use it. Um, so stick around, I'm gonna show you the kind of basics of a sewing machine, because they all work on basically the same principle. We're gonna do hand sewing first, and then I'm gonna show you around my sewing machine, which will be really, really similar to your sewing machine, I promise. Okay, so before we get started, let me tell you the three things that you have to do before you start sewing, no matter what. Firstly, you have to wash your hands. That's, I can't tell you the number of times where I've just gone, oh, I'll just quickly whiz that through the sewing machine, I'll just do that really quickly. And you've got just a little tiny splodge, a little tiny mark on your hand, and it's like a nice white, like linen, nice fabric and then you get this little mark or splodge on the fabric. Always, always, always wash your hands before you start sewing. I mean, we should all be washing our hands loads anyway at the moment, so this should not be an added chore to your sewing career. Um, the next thing is to set up everything you need. Make sure you've got everything within kind of reaching distance of you, um, that you're not having to kind of start and then think, oh, I need that piece of thread or I need that I need to thread a bobbin, I need to get that pair of scissors, I haven't got the right fabric, like make sure that everything you need for your project, what you're working on now is kind of within, if not arm's length, the same room as you, it would be a great start. And then the other thing is to just think about your lighting and make sure that you can see what you're sewing, particularly if you're sewing on dark fabric. The little demos I'm gonna to do today are on this little piece of white cotton, so it'll be easy for you to see uh, and to see what I'm doing. Um, and also in the sewing machine as well, I'm gonna use um, either this white or I've got some green over there. Um, but when you're sewing, just make sure that you've got light. Um, I don't particularly enjoy sewing at night too much under false uh, interior lighting. I much prefer sewing in the daytime when you've got natural light. All sewing machines, at least I think all sewing machines, come with a light on them, uh, which you can turn on and off. There'll be a switch somewhere on your sewing machine that you can turn your light on and off and that will add light directly onto the needle and onto the working area um, but if you're sewing by hand just make sure you've got good lighting so you can see what you're doing you can see that your stitches are going straight that everything's going okay so those are your three things wash your hands get your stuff ready make sure you can see okay so let's just have a quick think about the equipment that we're going to need one of the things I see people make a mistake, they decide they're gonna to learn to sew, so they go out and buy loads and loads of really expensive equipment. Obviously we can't go out to buy anything at the moment, um, but don't go, don't go onto Amazon or <laughs> anything like that and start ordering like tons and tons of really expensive equipment for sewing, you don't need that at all. 
You can start easy with hand sewing. If you decide you enjoy it and you want to get a machine or you get your machine down from the loft or take the cover off of it and decide it's, it's worth giving it a go, um, you don't need to go and buy an expensive sewing machine. Um, I'll show you mine in a minute. Um, it's not expensive. Here's what you will need. You will need some needles. Hold that against my back. So just a regular hand sewing needle. They come in different sizes depending on the different cottons that you're gonna use, the different threads. Most often you'll, you'll get like a needle wheel. You know those wheel things where they're like stuck in? Um, or they come in packs. You can buy them in the supermarket. So if you are going out to the supermarket, you probably can pick one up. Um, they're usually on the end of the aisles. So you'll need some needles. You'll need thread. I'll show you my thread box. So I got this thread box in Audi a couple of years ago now, actually, a few years ago now. Um, I think it was something like $6.99. These are not expensive threads. They're not professional grade threads that are gonna, you know, be the most fantastic thing that you ever use. But for the projects that we're doing here, they are perfect. They're absolutely fine. They come in a rainbow of colors, as you see. With this set, you get the matching bobbin to the matching thread. So you don't even have to spin a bobbin. It's all there, ready to go. This pack also comes with a thimble. I don't really like thimbles. I know people say you should use them for hand sewing, but I'm not a big fan of a thimble. Um, and it also randomly comes with two, I can see here, two different types of sewing machine needle. You'll also need scissors. You'll need a couple of different types of scissor. You'll, you will need a fabric scissor. These are fabric scissors. Do not ever, 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 ever use your fabric scissors to cut anything other than fabric. You will blunt the end and then when you go to cut the fabric you will tear the weave and that's why you'll, you'll end up with frayed ends. Just, 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 just don't, okay? This is your fabric scissors. They only cut fabric. The other thing it's useful to have is a little pair of scissors. Um, this is good for like snipping threads, snipping the thread off at the end of the sewing machine. My sewing machine does have a stitch um, cutter on it as well, but a little pair of scissors is absolutely fine. The other thing you might find really useful is a seam ripper. These, can you see that? So it's got, it's a metal, it's got a spike and then it's got a little v shape in the middle and this is a sharp blade right in there and then it's got a little blobble little plastic bob on the top seam rippers are really good if you make a mistake and you just need to rip the seam and start again um and they usually come like in when you buy those like, little sewing kits they usually come in in a sewing kit and then the other thing you'll need is some fabric as i say i've got this little piece of white cotton here with me today but i have a whole host of scrap fabrics and bits and pieces i'll I might do a little video on how to how to salvage fabric from old clothing and things. You don't don't go out and buy tons and tons and tons of fabric. Although I have done a bit of an order on eBay because most people are still uh, shipping on eBay um, to buy just a few bits of fabric for this project. And I figured these are small businesses that are selling fabric. That's their livelihood. Maybe it's okay to spend a bit of money on some different fabrics that I can use during this project. Otherwise you'll just get everything in denim because I'm forever cutting up jeans and making stuff out of denim. Yeah, I might do a little separate video on the anatomy of a pair of jeans and how to cut them up to get the most fabric off of them. It's great, it's like deep burning a chicken, it's great fun. Anyways, the other thing that you're gonna need is some pins. You don't need posh expensive pins. This is my, as you, this is in a, mackerel pate pot from Sainsbury's. These are my pins, there we go. Okay, first things first, let's do some hand sewing. I'm gonna show you the three, I guess what you might call the holy trinity of hand sewing stitches. These are the three stitches, if you can learn these, you can basically make anything. And then just quickly at the end, I'm gonna show you uh, a, a bonus stitch, which is called a flip stitch, um, which is also kind of useful. I'm not entirely sure whether we're going to use it. Oh yeah, we will on a couple of the projects actually. So I'll teach you that as well. Sometimes it's called edging stitch, but flip stitch, whatever you want to call it. So I'll show you that as well. But the first stitch that I'm going to show you is running stitch. Now running stitch is probably the first stitch that anybody learns to do when they learn to sew. It's essentially taking the thread, 
and running it through the fabric. So let me show you. As you see, I've got just a piece, this is just a piece of ordinary uh, white cream cotton. And I've threaded my needle, as you can see here. I'm using this yellow thread, which I think will show up on the cotton. You'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I've threaded my needle through once. I've got the long bit that I'm gonna sew with, and then this little tail just to secure the thread and make sure it doesn't work its way off of the um, needle while I'm sewing. So running stitch. With all stitches, you need to start your stitching somewhere. So in order to start your stitching, you're gonna go into the fabric and then pick it up the other side. So you've got a little bit of fabric on the needle and you're gonna pull that through. Now you've got one of two options here. You can either pull it through a little way and then stop and do a couple of stitches in pretty much the same place and that will anchor your thread and stop it pulling through. Ooh. Another way to do it, which I normally do, would be to do one of those stitches and then as you're coming up, this fabric is twisting, the thread is twisting, as you pull it through you're going to get this loop. And instead of pulling that loop all the way through, just tuck your needle through the loop and then pull it tight and then you'll get a knot in the end of the fabric that you can barely see. I mean, you can see it a little here because I'm using coloured fabric, but you'll barely see it. Now, the running stitch, what you're going to do is pick up one, two, three stitches on your needle and then you're going to pull it through and you see you've now got a row of stitches and then you would carry on your row picking up one two three and pulling it through if you're doing smaller stitches you might be able to pick up four on a needle but at this size you're looking at about three. So this stitch is good for just getting fabric attached to other pieces of fabric. It has its limitations as to what you can do with it. So if you notice, if I pull on the fabric, it gathers. Now you might want that. If you're doing a project where you want a gather, then a running stitch is going to be perfect. And in fact, you can gather and then you can do a back stitch over the top which is the next stitch I'm going to show you and then you'll end up with these nice gathers in your fabric but not going to be the one if you want the seam to not move to be absolutely stable. When you come to the end of a row of stitch I'll show you here you're going to do essentially what you did in the beginning you're going to go back in to the stitch and back up there and then put the needle through the loop and pull it to a knot and then repeat and the same thing pull it through through the loop into a knot and then with your little scissors you can snip the end off there you go so now we have one row of running stitch okay next one is back stitch so I'm going to start off in exactly the same way by pulling the thread through, making a stitch and pulling it through, making another stitch and pulling through the loop to make a knot. There we go. You're going to start almost in exactly the same way in that you're going to make a stitch and then but instead of stitching forward to here where your next stitch would be like in running stitch you're going to go back into where that last stitch was and then come back out the other way so you see this is kind of in the middle you're making a big stitch around it 
and pull it through. You can only do one of these at a time. You can't do three on the needle like you did with the running stitch. And you're going to go back and pull through, back in there, and pull through. Do you see how this is going as a back stitch? Back and forward. It's like one step backwards, two steps forwards. Or rather, one stitch backwards, two stitches forward. And this is called back stitch. Back stitch is like the, the holy grail of stitches for hand sewing. This is the one that you're going to do the most. When you want to finish, you do your one stitch, don't do the full length of the stitch, and then do exactly what we did before. Make a stitch, make a loop, and pop the needle through the loop to create a knot to fasten it off. Yeah, back stitch is one of the most stable, sturdy, durable stitches in hand sewing. It's the one that you'll use the most. That's really not very neat. Um, on the back side, you see you've got these long stitches where you've been going over the top. On the running stitch, you see the back side exactly the same as the front side. There you go, that's running. Oh, that's back stitch. And that's the one that you need to know the most. You'll use that the most um, in, in your sewing for all these projects. And let's cut that off. I'm about to lose my thread. Back, I've re-threaded my needle. They say you should never have your piece of thread any longer than your forearm. So if you extend your arm out, hang on, to here with the needle in the position that you hold it, your thread should never really be any longer than your arm because otherwise you'll be like trying to reach to pull the thread through. So you don't need to do that. So make sure it's never any longer than your arm. There you go. Little, little hint, little tip, little trick. Okay back to the hand sewing board, which is down here on my fabulous other camera. I hope you love my setup here. Two iPhones and two tripods. It's uh, very low tech. <laughs> okay, so back on here. Here's my newly threaded piece of cotton. Um, this cotton I'm using is a Gutterman. This is a heavy duty cotton. This is a jeans cotton actually, that you would use for doing jeans. So the third stitch I want to show you is the running back stitch, which is a bit of a hybrid, a combination of these two stitches. And the other thing, I've been showing you and demonstrating to you how to do this on the top of the fabric. When you're actually sewing for projects, you would do the knot bit on the bottom of the fabric so that this if you can, you turn your fabric over and do it on this side. So you go in, pull your thread through, so you've got your tail, do a back stitch, do one back stitch, ooh, for luck. That's got caught on my thread. There we go. One back stitch for luck. And then one back stitch. Through the loop. To secure it so it's not going anywhere. Okay. Then flip it over, what you've got on the front side is not a trailing tail like this, sorry, I was off the top of the camera, but you've actually got a nice neat stitch that you're gonna start with. So you wanna come up this stitch, and then you're ready to start with whatever you're doing. Okay, so running back stitch, you're gonna take your three running stitches on your needle, just like we did for running stitch, and then you're going to put one back stitch in, and you're going to 
going to do, sorry, another set of three running stitches and then a back stitch. So you'll see that's kind of quicker than doing a whole row of back stitch. It's more stable than a running stitch in that it's not going to gather and pucker the fabric. So it's then you would take your needle and go back over the stitch that you just created. Flip your fabric over because we want our knots to be on the wrong side of the garment or the piece that we're making. And then we're going to go under the stitch that you've just made instead of through the fabric. Make a loop. Cool. So, so we can cut that off. So there we go. Those are our three stitches. We've got running stitch, back stitch, and running back stitch. As you can see, these are not neat. These were just me doing them to show you what to do. And probably what you want to do is start with quite big stitches just to get into the swing of it. And then as you go, try and get your stitches smaller and smaller and smaller. You're probably aiming for, on a back stitch, you probably want each stitch to be about three to four millimeters. I think will be okay for all the projects we've got here. If you can get smaller, down to two or three millimeters, then good for you. But um, yeah, three to four millimeters will be fine for all the projects that we're doing here. But start big, get comfortable with it, and then get smaller and smaller and smaller. That's your little homework for the day. Okay, let me just show you that one last hand stitch that you're gonna need to know. Okay, so this slip stitch or edge stitch is for if you're attaching um, folded edges together. So it might be that you've turned um, a piece inside out, so you've got the neat edge on the outside is one that's folded, and you need to attach that onto another piece of fabric. So I'm just gonna do that. I might just pin that quickly. So the idea is to get as little amount of stitching on this edge, or on this edge. The stitching needs to go right down where the crease is. So it's probably easier if you make a knot in the end of the thread for this stitch. So you can do that just by binding the two cords together and you can make a knot, I'm absolutely sure of that. The trick is getting the first knot on top of the second knot. And just for added security, when I'm doing this, I do normally make a third knot on the top as well um, because I just want to make sure that it's not going to pull through the fabric. You're going to sew away from you. You're going to start at the end closest to you and you're going to sew away from you. You're going to come in the wrong side of the fabric and come up on the side this side, the folded fabric side, not this side. I think that's not pulling through now. So you're gonna do a tiny little stitch here over the edge and into the second piece of fabric. Then you're gonna run the needle so that it comes up just a little further along and pull that down. And then you'll go in opposite and pull the thread further along. Did you see what I'm doing? Going in at the same level and pushing the needle further away from me by, I mean I'm doing this about a centimetre but depending on the project it might need to be smaller. I'm just doing this to show you. So we go in, we push along ooh, and we pull out. Then on the back, we would do, you see what you're creating on the back there, there's these sort of loops. So here you would just do 
a little stitch that doesn't come through to the front, that only stays on the edge of the fabric. You see the needle hasn't gone through here. I can feel the needle, but it hasn't gone through this layer of fabric. It's only gone through the folded bit of fabric underneath. I'm gonna pull that through, make a loop, and pull our thread through it. And then that's nice and secure with a knot. And then cut it off. Also, you would do this in the colour fabric. Uh, the, the thread would be the same colour as the fabric, so it would barely notice, unless you were intentionally making it decorative. And then you might do the stitches a little bigger and also make sure that they were even. <laughs> so there you go, guys. That is the three Holy Trinity stitches of hand sewing and a bonus one that you'll need in some of the projects that I've got planned for you over the next few weeks. If you want to know how to use a sewing machine, stick around. If you're not going to be using a sewing machine, I mean, you can watch this next bit if you want, um, but you can go start get practised on your hand sewing. Thread those needles up and get going. Okay, if you're still with me, well done, congratulations. Um, I've got my sewing machine out, which you can't see because it's just below the frame. Hang on. Ta -da. I can't pull it too much or it'll pull out from the wall and unplug itself. Um, I've got my sewing machine out and I'm going to just give you a bit of a guided tour of my sewing machine. They all work in essentially the same way. So just a bit about the difference between what you get as a hand sewn line of thread and what you get as a sewing machine line of thread. They are different. They both serve the same function of holding two pieces of fabric together. Um, obviously a sewing machine does it a lot quicker. And the main difference when you're sewing with a needle, which I still have here, you're sewing with one piece of thread into the fabric and making, if you're doing back stitch, which you probably are, making a back stitch and a loop to hold the fabrics together. On a sewing machine, you're working two pieces of thread. You're working with the thread, the main piece of thread that's going through the machine that you can see, uh, that comes out into the needle at the bottom and you're also working with bobbins. The bobbin is a thread that's underneath somehow in your machine. They all roughly work the same. Uh, some of them are top loading, some of them are side loading, but they're all there. Um, and essentially what a sewing machine is doing is passing one thread into the fabric and then using the other, pi the other piece of thread to hook it and lock it into place. So thread, hook, thread, hook thread hook and that's how you get that nice long row of stitches um, easily, evenly and securely uh, on your piece of fabric and it's very durable as well if you, especially if you use uh, the proper thread that you need to um, it's very durable the, the fabric in theory should rip before the seams do if they're sewn well that's true of hand sewing as well as sewing machine sewing so that's basically how they work in terms of how to thread your sewing machine, I don't know what type of sewing machine you've got in front of you. I have a Singer Start sewing machine. It's not an expensive one, um, although I note that they're currently out of stock in Hobbycraft at the moment. Um, they are advertised on there as £85. I bought mine in the sale, I, so I paid £65 for this. So this is not a expensive, professional, high industrial action usage sewing machine. This is a, a very kind of basic beginner's sewing machine. And I, I've had I've had this one for about five or six years. Um, the one I had before was similar. The one I had in America was similar, a Singer basic level sewing machine. So I've never really had big professional electronic digital sewing machines I don't have the use for that sort of thing and I find that I can do everything that I do just fine on my basic singer I did note that Hobbycraft have one at um, 40 pounds which is their own brand I've never used it but I imagine that it is a, a similar kind of level very small so if you wanted to have a go with the sewing machine and you don't have one then just looking at that one it looks like it runs pretty much the same way that my stinger does, so I think you'd be you'd be fine with that one if you didn't want to spend 80 quid on a sewing machine, you could spend 40 instead. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> so I'm gonna pick up my little base level 
camera tripod thingy that I've got here. <laughs> and I'm gonna use this one to show you my sewing machine, show you the bits and pieces on it because it will be really similar um, to your sewing machine. Let me turn this on and then you can see my sewing machine, here we go. And there's the other camera that I'm using to talk to you. <laughs> so this is the Singer Start. Um, as I said, very basic level sewing machine, but operates in pretty much the same way as every other sewing machine does. So whatever your sewing machine looks like, it's gonna have these same basic parts to it. It's gonna have a thread spool. Um, this one has two, so you can do a double thread sewing through that. We're not gonna do that on any of these projects. It has a bobbin winder, so if you need to make a bobbin, you can thread it up here. It tells you on the top here as well how to thread to make a bobbin winder, and then you put that over to your bobbin winder, wherever yours is. Usually you have to push it over to engage it, spin the bobbin, and then push it over to release it. That will be uh, the same, wherever it is on your machine, it'll be the same principle. So you've got the thread channel, basically. So the thread, as you see on mine, I've got this blue thread on there at the moment, goes from the spool, goes through this little thing here, around this little thing here, down this little groove here, around there, up to the ooh, sewing arm, which is this thing in here, that has the thread inside it, comes down here, down there, let me zoom in, through this bit of metal that secures it, and then into the needle itself. And then you always thread your needle from front to back, and then you tuck your thread under the presser foot, and that's the presser foot that goes up and down, holds the fabric in place, and you can probably see underneath there ooh, are these um, tracks and treads, and that's what moves your fabric through the machine. Very simple. The other thing I should show you is the bobbin, and my bobbin is a front-loading bobbin in here. If I pull it out, you can see it. So the bobbin is in, hang on, I'll put this down and come back to you in a minute when I've released it. So as you see, there are um, two different parts to a bobbin. The actual bobbin, which is this little spool of thread here, and the bobbin holder, which will look roughly the same on every sewing machine, unless you've got a really old, 100-year-old plus sewing machine that has one of the like dart bobbin things. I, we're not using that. I've, I've got one, it's down to the right-hand side of me right now, um, but I've never sewn on it, at least. Actually, that's not true. I have sewn on it, but a long time ago, and I can't even remember how I got on with it, but there you go, we have the excitement of a 100 plus year old sewing machine, just down the road. Um, anyway, back to the bobbin. So your bobbin will go into the holder and it will tell you in the manual which way it goes in. Mine goes in this way with the thread running to the right and then it will have a little piece of metal or something that you have to pull it down inside of until it comes out of wherever the little hole is that the bobbin comes out of. And then turn that over and then that goes into the machine and you'll hear it click in. There we go. And then ordinarily you could just pop your machine up now but I'm going to show you what happens when you cast your bobbin on. So you hold your thread at the back of the machine and then do one full rotation with your hand on the hand stitch and you can see the needle is going down and the bobbin thread is being pulled up and then you see, this is really difficult. You can see this little thread, this little loop here, is the bobbin thread being pulled out. And then you can just tease that out so that you end up with the bobbin thread and the main thread out to the back of the machine and ready to 
so. And then you just pop that on there. Pop that on there. And bingo, sewing machine is ready to go. Uh, the only other little thing I will show you, excuse the base of the tripod, is somewhere around the back here, there will be a lever that operates your presser foot. So it might be on the side there, it might be to the back of the machine, it might be on this side of the machine, but probably not because most people are right-handed and the world is designed for right-handed people. Very often it's through the hole because that's where you'll be sewing and you can just knock your presser foot into position. Let's do some sewing on the sewing machine. I've positioned my other camera here right in front of the foot of the sewing machine so you should be able to see what I'm doing. So let's for sake of simplicity let's take two pieces of fabric that we want to sew together. So I've got more of this plain cotton. I think this is an old bed sheet or pillowcase or something that uh, I'm using. So you're going to take your two pieces of fabric that you want to attach together on a seam and line them up. Line up the two edges together. There we go. And then you're going to take a pin. Let me do this on the other camera. It's easier to pin if your seam is going to be here. You want to pin at 90 degrees to your seam. I did that completely off camera. Let me do another one. So, I've never sewn on camera before. So through there and through there. And you want the... Uh, oh, that's a bit off. There. And you want the heads of the pins to be on the inner part of the sewing machine, not on the outer part of the sewing machine. Unless you're left-handed, maybe you do need them there so you can pull them out easier. I'm not sure. If you're left-handed, give it a go and see what happens. In order to sew a basic seam, we're going to start here. This is not going to be the neatest seam I've ever sewn in my life. But it's one to get you going. You should always start by manually lowering the needle so you want to hold on to the threads in the back I've got both of them pinched in my hand and then lower the needle into the fabric so you always want to start with your needle down not with your needle up if you start with your needle up then it can like as you do that first stitch it'll whip the thread out and then it won't be threaded so you'll have to spend your time going back re-threading it so always start with your needle down having held the cotton in place when you're going down and the other part of the machine i didn't show you is the foot pedal the foot pedal lives on the floor if you're like driving a car you press it it goes you take your foot off of it it stops that's that simple tip with the sewing machine not a tip actually this is a rule with a sewing machine your foot should only be on the pedal when you're sewing, when you're cutting your fabric, when you're pinning, when you're threading your needle, when you're set, doing your setting, whatever you're doing on a sewing machine, your foot needs to be off the pedal because there's nothing like something making you jump, you press it down, you catch your finger. We don't want any injuries. We don't want any blood on our fabrics. Um, so only ever, ever, ever put your foot on the pedal when you're sewing. When you're not sewing, take your foot off the pedal, put it by the side. Public safety announcement. So I'm going to remove this pen because the uh, presser foot is holding that steady. So you would sew, for a basic line of stitching, you would sew a couple of stitches. You're then going to press the reverse lever and sew back to your start point and then release it and that will lock the fabric into place then you can just sew a nice straight line don't sew over your pins because although these are fairly thin or well, this isn't this is a thicker pin although these are fairly thin pins and probably your machine would just go over it there's always the potential that you can break a sewing machine needle when you sew over a pin if you catch us at the wrong point 
So you carry on. And then when you come to the end of your row of stitches, you're going to do your reverse stitch. And then back again. Always make sure when you want to cut your thread that this little arm thingy is at its very top position, just poking out there, do you see? You can then lift up your press foot, pull out your thread, and then cut your thread off. I've got a little cutting blade, do you see there, right on the side, which is really handy. I like that. If you haven't got that, whip it off with a pair of scissors. And what you will end up with is a neat row of stitches like that. So for most of the projects that I'm going to do, all you're going to be required to do is sew exactly that on a sewing machine. Start it off, back stitch, do your row of threads, back stitch a few stitches, come to the end, cut the fabric off. I think every project I've got, that's all you're going to be required to do on a sewing machine. I hope that's given you a bit of confidence as to how to use a sewing machine. They are kind of noisy, worry beasts sometimes. Um, so I think it's uh, sometimes it can be a bit intimidating, but really, once you get used to them, they're super easy to use. They make sewing an absolute doddle. You can fix things, you can make things. Your life will be transformed if you can just get even this basic row of stitching done on a sewing machine. It will make everything so much easier it really will and like I say I learned to use a sewing machine when I was about seven or eight years old um, with my mum's supervision of course um, but that said my mum doesn't remember teaching me how to use a sewing machine but she did me and my friend Sarah so yeah you can you don't have to be like over 18 or whatever um, but do if you are going to teach your kids how to do it make sure you're comfortable with using your sewing machine and um, make sure that they're confident and comfortable doing it and that they understand that, you know, the needle is sharp and, it, you know, they need to be careful with their hands where they're putting them. But there's no reason why kids can't learn to use a sewing machine. At least I don't think so anyway. <laughs> so there you go. That was lesson one. That was much, much longer than all the other lessons are going to be. The other uh, projects that I'm going to show you how to make are going to be really quick easy make videos but I wanted this one to give you a full understanding of hand sewing stitches that you're going to need and how to use a sewing machine if that's your plan for this time of isolation to dig out the sewing machine and familiarize yourself with it and get it get using it so I knew this video would be much much longer than all the others will be there you go get to it there's your homework um, I'm gonna put together some project sheets for every project coming out. So there'll be a little guide that tells you how much fabric you need, how much elastic you need, like all the bits and pieces that you need. Um, so you'll be able to see those. You won't need to be sort of frantically jotting things down while you're watching my tutorials. And there you go, guys. That's, that's, that's sewing in a nutshell. It's not as intimidating as you might think it is. It's actually really good fun. So um, get practicing and I will see you in the next video. Bye.